understand who killer the dog was. Uh, well, I just think... <laughs> What's happening, man? Get the show okay. on the road. I gotta get this lighting done right. How's the lighting here? Uh, it's, 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 I mean, it could be better, but you know, could be better, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make do with what you got, right? Oh uh, man, I'm up at um. So, when am I gonna? There we go. So, you know, I I moved to Florida, and I love it. Mm -hmm. And this week, my daughter has her break and of all the places she wanted to do, she wanted to come back to Florida. I mean, I come back to New Jersey. So it's like 12 <laughs> degrees. I'm freezing. I'm at my mother-in-law's house. Uh, I go to Cleveland this weekend. It's going to be also freezing. I didn't know this weekend, apparently in Cleveland's the all-star game. Um, people are saying, Hey, you know, Dave Chappelle's playing there. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Um, if I get one more comment, I'm going to say this to everyone right now. You know how many comments I get about who, whatever the kid that was in the Super Bowl? Everyone's like, J is this your kid? Uh, Jim Brewer, is this you? Uh, you guys are related. Like, what? What? what oh, my God. What's who, going Burrow? on? The kid, who, the kid who played for Cincinnati. Everyone's like, hey, what are you what are you? What's going, Brewer? This is your. Oh, it's been nonstop since this kid's been in the playoffs that everyone is like, "Hey, this guy's Jim Brewer. Or, Jim, this is one of your kids. Have you seen him?" Uh, so to Joe Burrow, I believe that's his name, Joe Burrow. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, I am so unprofessional. It's scary. Like, am I looking in the camera right now? <laughs> am I looking in the camera, Mike, or is he here? No, no. Here? Yep, there you go. Yep. There okay. You go. Uh, uh, listen, to Joe Burrow, this message is for you. A, I'm sorry you your team lost the Super Bowl. I don't think anyone was watching anyway, to be honest with you, brother. Um, I was half, it was more of a gathering. But Joe Burrow, this message is specifically for you. I'm sorry. As I know you're getting this, I know. People are going, Burrow, you know, Jim Brewer. And you probably have zero clue who I am. You can care less who I am. And uh, can you imagine being Joe Burrow going, why does everyone think I'm the guy? What, what, who's Jim Brewer? Who's Jim Brewer? The guy from 90 years ago that did a movie? Uh, I mean, what, what, who's Jim Brewer? Why, why am I being compared to Jim Brewer? Um, so, yes, I'm apologizing to Joe Burrow, I'm sorry for whatever ridiculous comments you're getting because I'm getting them nonstop. <laughs> and now that I opened the floodgates, now I know you're going to continue. But that's all right. It's all fun. Have your joy. Say what you're going to say. It's all good. It's all fun and all that. You know, um, people are running up to him going, do the goat thing. Do the goat <laughs> thing. <laughs> of course they are. And he's sitting there like with his, with his friends going, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, everyone. You know who I used to get, and I still get a lot? Who? Uh, Jack Vale. Do you know who Jack Vale is? No. He's, he's a big YouTube guy, and he started this thing called the Pooter, which is a fart thing, which is really – so he started making videos with this little fart thing, and a lot of them are belly laughing funny, belly laughing funny. But if you look up Jack Vale – now that's spooky. You know how many people come up to me and they're like, I, I had people come up to me and go, I watch your videos all the time. You go, oh, wow, thank you. You make me laugh so hard. Wow, thank you. Can you, can you sign this? And I'll sign it. And they'll go, that's, that's a long last name. Like that, that, that's how you, your real name is what? Where's Jim Brewer? Like, what? You're not Jack Vale? Jack Vale? Um, which is funny because me and Jack are actually friends. We we became friends because people go to Jack Vale and think he's Jim Brewer, and people come to me and think oh, I'm no Jack Vale. And we finally reached out and met each other. What a what a incredible human being! I think he's down in Tennessee now. I don't know if he's still doing his videos, but just a beautiful, incredible guy. 
Um, if you haven't checked out the Jack Vail videos, they're worth checking out. So something I've been doing, um, like I said, I check a lot of stuff on Patreon. Uh, oh, before I, just a quick update. So on, I believe it was, it was, it was a Patreon. Somebody had to say podcast. This guy, James, who's, um, has a foundation for bets. I want to pick his brain a little bit more and all that jazz, but for all vets, we're working on something really, I'm hoping turns out to be pretty cool, like cool events, cool things that I'm going to need you, you, the people, you, the honest people to help get involved with. I don't want to, until I know all the details um then we'll, then we'll put out but it's looking really cool i was talking to i love the band volbeat and mike i had no clue you were such a big fan you texted me a week ago and said you're going to see the band volbeat yep you didn't say you were going you just said volbeat tonight new jersey oh i just assumed that that's what it meant but yeah i guess i should have been more specific no no i didn't know <laughs> and i was talking to rob caggiano the whole time uh. and now i feel stupid and I, I, I could have set you up for that. So I, I reached out to Rob Caggiano, who actually, Mike, did you, you know, I made a rock album, right? Yeah. It's kind of, oh, yeah. Okay. oh, yeah, I told you. So anyway, Caggiano has this incredible history. He's a great producer. He's in a band, Volbeat. He's to, um, with Joe Sib, my, that I take to open for me a bunch. And it was Joe Sib had a, a music company, a, a record label. And on his record label, he had this one artist, Jesse, who he told him his whole story, did this song with Bruce Springsteen and Rob Caggiano. He didn't say Caggiano produced it, but then when I was working with Caggiano, Caggiano was telling me how he produced a song with this guy, Jesse, and they met Springsteen. It was an incredible story. So I'm like, wait a minute. You tell we, where, wait a minute. I'm friends with you and I'm friends with you and you don't even know that we'd friends. Like, this is nuts. <laughs> so we're working on a really cool thing to have, um, we're going to have Caggiano on, Joseph, um, Jesse, and, and it's going to be, we, we got some cool stuff we're working on. So <clears throat> with that, I started, I started, I read a lot of comments. It's mostly Instagram. Anyone that DM, and DM me, I always read and I look at some of the Patreon stuff. Um, and I've been meeting obscure people and I don't know anything about them. I should get to know more about them. Um, and one of them is our guest today who who we just started talking about, hey, dude, let's just podcast. Let's just see, let's just podcast what you're talking about. And so I'm going to have him on <clears throat> in a moment. And I'm also going to have this other guy. I met him the other night. He came up to me and he goes, uh, Hey Jim, I really like what you're doing. And I like the videos that you made recently. And I watched your last YouTube. Uh, I watched the Bruniverse podcast. And I heard you on here and I hold you in there. And, the, um, he started telling me about military and he goes, you know, I'm a veteran, this, and he started talking about, whoa, 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 stop right there. I would love to talk to you and have a long conversation about this. Um, because I would love that. So we exchanged, we exchanged info and I didn't want to push him. I said, you up for a podcast and he reached out yesterday. So he's going to be coming on. Um, so the st long story short, I'm starting to reach out to people that I've never met that I truly feel they're honest and sincere and they want to bring something to the table and talk about something without getting political and too crazy and all that jazz. Uh, so we'll see where this goes and ah, I'm going to hold the other one in Wait till you. There's a possibility of a new platform and I'll just tell you the way I came across these people is such a Forrest Gump moment, which happens my whole life. It's bizarre. And I hope it comes to fruition because if it does, 
I'll bring everyone involved to the table. And then one other thing, which I want to bring you guys along on, I wrote a script about a year or two ago, and I didn't want to sell to anyone in Hollywood whatsoever because I just don't trust them. They, they, I don't trust them. There's agendas. You got to be, you got to be this color, and you got to be this gender, and you got to have this, and you got to have that, and you got to have those, you got to have someone from here. And you're like, oh my god, can I just do it the way I visualize it and the way it happened? Can we do that, or is that just too crazy for society? But I looked at it again today, and it's I really like I. I'm very harsh on myself, and I, I really like it. And I'm going to write that series, and I'm wondering if this is a place where we actually do the read-through um, and the casting and that let you, the people, figure out what to do with it from there. And who knows, maybe this guy, uh, John Rice, who I'm bringing on right now, he's, he, um, I believe – Produces and stuff like that, but I'll let John talk for himself. What's up, John? Hey, Jim. It's a pleasure oh, to dude, be here. I know you. What? I know <laughs> you. How? I've never met you. I've seen your videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. See, I'm so stupid. This is why I love doing this. It's like, <laughs> I, I, but this is the way I roll. I'm, I'm a meathead in this department. I don't trust anyone. At, oh, my God, dude. I've watched you, especially about two years ago. I started really watching you, and I've seen oh, your videos. Yeah. And some of the things you were saying, I was like, I should – oh, I liked it. This guy's a – this guy's a – I should reach out to him. I'm like, you know what? Don't reach out to him. Don't. Then it looks like you're looking for some. This is a – I had z – when I tell you I'm just in this new world, John – where Lily, Annie, who reached out to you, yeah, I said, Annie, what am I walking into? Like, what, 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 what exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what am I, what am I walking into? And she's like, Jim, it's you know, he's a, he's a producer. He does this and that. I'm like, okay, well, what? what it's about censorship. I said, yeah, 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 that's right. All right, let's let's go. To <laughs> Good censorship. Let's go. <laughs> so this is so funny. But I like being honest. I'm not going to BS hey, anyone. You know what? And I and I came after you. I was I saw your video from a few months ago, and I started like sharing it with people. And I reached out to you not not because I wanted anything, because I was like, he gets it. He gets it. Yeah. You yeah. totally get it because you yeah. lived it. I lived it all. I I lived. Yeah, and it's it 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 uh, which. I, I was out there. I did it. I did it. I seen the stars. I went to the mountain. I, I saw who hangs out on the mountain. And I saw <laughs> yeah. how I saw how they hang out. And I went, whoa, My this is uh wow. Okay. Um I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my room. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> exactly. Where are you going? Where, where bro? are you going? <laughs> you can't leave now. You stay with us. Don't you want to? Don't you want to be on the mountain? No, no, it's a nice view, but I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. So, <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing. It's like, dude, what? How do they get so many people to believe in it? Because they know every single angle in which to tempt you, and you have to. You really have to like. It's kind of like what you were talking about. You have to have the most, at that time that you can, you have to have the most honest conversation with yourself at a certain point to say, I, if I keep going down this road, I'm holding on to a duality here that will never be reconciled. And I'm believing that it will be at some point. And, it, and you just can't, you can't surrender yourself over to that because you know that you're you're, while you're watching that in them, you're watching them betray themselves, then other people, and then it just keeps compiling. And you have to live that contradiction every day while pers by giving a perceived persona online or elsewhere that is not you in real life. And that's what freaks us out when people come up to us and see us like this amazing person. And you're going, you don't know the real story. <laughs> you know, you didn't live the adventure like I did where I had key critical decisions to make that 
uh, were going to be the difference between me going, you know, you don't want to go down that road down that, you know, you're like <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I, besides last week, that was a whole different, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Someone wishing me to die. Um, because, because I didn't want to play venues, whatever. That's a, That's, that's nothing. But I was really shocked of who reached out. Um, but w w there was one or two. There was one in particular. I was really shocked the way they reached out to me and were upset, but pretended they weren't upset. They were like, hey, I just called to have a conversation. I just, and, the, and I could tell whether they were like, mm, there's an agenda to this call. And, they started, um, then it became a debate, and I held my ground, and I said, listen, we're not going to agree with one another. I don't know what else to tell you. I, I highly respect you, but mm, we're not going in the right direction. Um, and then they did it again, and I was so confused by it. I almost thought, like, is this really does this person really think like this? Like, did they really? And then I talked to someone else and they're like, Jim, you got to remember certain people get to the top of the mountain and they haven't come off yet. And when they're on that mountain, they don't know. They're only hanging out with all the mountaineers and all the mountaineers think the same way because they think, they think who they are and that that drug is way more addicting than heroin way more addicting than anything else and you will find yourself doing things you never could imagine and you will you will say things that you would never have said before or believe and convince yourself to do and say things that you would never have done and it's all to hold on to the mountain range. That's it. It's the end of the day. It's really that simple. It's that simple. You know, it's it's so true. And I mean, all my life, like you were talking about that, I saw my whole life in front of me in metaphors that way. It's it's that they're not apparent to us at the time because we give belief in them that there's something else that isn't really there. It's our bests that we're putting into them. That's the illusion of the magic. That's what makes it possible. And it doesn't mean that it's, you know, evil over here and good over here. It's like, no, it's all explored for you. The problem is, is that the propaganda is for and against. That's the problem. It gives you an emotional anchor where you can have a side to the equation, deceiving yourself while deceiving everybody else around you and not realizing that you're two sides of the same coin, you're two sides of the same mirror. It's just, we're all projecting onto each other. And this is the thing. I, I just want to tell you this is one of the things I went back this week and I started watching old clips of you on Saturday night live, Joe Pesci and others. <laughs> and what was interesting and what I loved about it is this, it's like what you do, what we do, what all of us really do in our own respective ways is we create incredible memories for people that we don't intend to do at the time. But it's like when you're in that grocery store, and I remember you telling, retelling this on one of your comedy specials or something, or recently, <laughs> yeah, that you yeah. said <clears throat> how they were like, nah! and you know, you heard it, <laughs> and you're like, it's a language, and basically they're at play with you. Because that memory from 20 years ago or 15 years ago or 10 years ago or a moment ago has sustained throughout time in them and it offers them a place of connection, which is what we're all doing. We're all offering places of connection where you can plug and play with, you know, and I'm saying this is a personal lesson that I'm sharing, but not going into the detail. It's basically where you find the real true value in people that come forward in your real moment of need when you are under attack and when you are making mistakes and when you are screwing yourself and they are hurt, not because of you doing something bad that they don't like or that they condemn because it, you know, it gives them power over you and among their minions and all that shit, but actually they're, they're real love, real care, real sacrifice going in 
and saying, I accept every single thing about you, flaws and all, because in a world full of bullshit and this straw man argument, it's got to end. Like for you and for everybody else, it's got to end. It has to, it has no choice. It really has no choice. That's, that's what people don't understand. It's, um, I've been observing, I guess the word is observing. We'll, we'll start with the first thing you said. What I discovered at a very young age, especially once television started for me, Saturday Night Live especially, Saturday Night Live, I saw everyone struggling and trying to get on and blah, blah, blah. And I noticed, you know, I started watching old stuff. I started looking at John Belushi and who are the stars? And everyone says they were the greatest and they were hilarious. John Belushi, God rest his soul, he had a lot of sketches that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Where he was True. awful. Um, yeah. But just like a just like baseball and all great entertainment what people remember over and over is the and there's the ball it's deep right there it is gone <laughs> and when you can hit those it doesn't matter how much you struck out <laughs> they yeah. remember you knocked that ball so far in the upper deck. People think Goat Boy was hilarious. There was a lot of Goat Boys that sucked. <laughs> but the, a lot of Pesci's were not great. But they, I discovered, I, I, I'm, I'm all about, even when I do stand-up, I guess I want to be funny, but I want to hit that ball so far <laughs> over the wall that the outfielder just goes, yeah, I'm not even moving. I'll look <laughs> at it. Yeah, that's gone. That's wow. Holy. And then you go around the bases and they go, ah, that's all. It's the highlight reel. And what I also discovered is such in life, whether it's with your family, whether it's friends, um, we're living in moments of time. That's it. We have moments in time. And people are going to remember these moments in time that you give them or, or uh, memory or whatever it is. So you have a choice. Do you want them to have good positive moments in time that they can cherish and hold on to forever? Or do you want to put out Moments in time that make people go, <coughs> oh, God, I remember that. And it's, um, <laughs> it's, true. And it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's, I, I try my best to continue doing that. And it's really mind boggling how many times I will step out of the game and take my own lane and mm -hmm. people go, Matter of fact, one of the person, the person that critic that really kind of criticized me, was all upset. Was the same type of person that said, "You know, what I admire about you. You always do what you want, and that just baffles me because you're supposed to uh, do stand up, then get in television, become a movie star, and then blah 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 blah." Mm -hmm. Where I was, do stand up get some tv oh i don't like what's going on here and, and i did my film i enjoy it but now hollywood is you know what i got kids i'm gonna have kids i'm gonna have family well no you can't leave that's not the law you don't you don't just have you don't all of a sudden find morals and a direction you should be no you're supposed to do that and supposed to i remember one time I, I just, you know, maybe, no, I'm not even going to say that. I'm not even going to say career-wise it affected me because mind and soul and healing-wise, there isn't one second, not one second where I go, uh, well, I should say, I mean, I'm very happy with my, with, my, with my journey, and I'm super happy 
where I've been the last couple of years. Yeah. You know, I sat with Harvey. I sat with Harvey. Harvey was yelling at me why I wouldn't take this movie. Yelling, Jimmy, I don't understand. What, what, what are you worried about? I said, I, he goes, I'm going to surround, I'm going to surround you on my life. He said, Gwyneth owes me a, uh, Gwyneth Bodge owes me a favor. I'm going to get this one or that one. It was some movie I auditioned for and I got it. And, um, and at that time, I remember going, oh boy, I might have blew it with this one. I had the biggest <laughs> movie, oh boy, I had the biggest movie production company in the world yelling at me to take this film and boy i'd be in the mint right now but thank god i didn't go there and it's happened time and time again you think you want the ah. so i'm at a point now john where i'm where i go i do have a lot to put out there i do have a film or two i do have tv idea mm -hmm. but they yep. are they are inspiring funny powerful i, li I like the, i like projects that make you go oh my god i cried i laughed so hard so hard but then i was sobbing and it just made me feel amazing and it made me feel that i'm not crazy in life and i don't I just don't trust that world anymore. So I've, I've got them here and I'm like, Oh, do I create them here? Do I just put it out there? It's, it's um, so where in your life, John, mm -hmm. did you tell, tell everyone where you started um, feeling the way you did? Cause like I said, I discovered you on a video and I kept watching. I'm like, Whoa, I just, Wow, I knew this guy's saying this guy's fascinating. And you were you were pretty intense with what you were talking about. Where did you turn? And if you could just let people know what you've done. Not yeah. like uh, here's my credits, but <laughs> here's my resume. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, thank you. And thanks for everything you said, because that hundred percent we all have our stories, but that's that's kind of the those are the deeper self-reflections that you eventually have as you get older, if you have any chance to have self-reflection. And so basically it's like this, I came from a really broken family. I got into acting with remember the Titans as an, as a, you know, a Titan football player for two and a, two months in Georgia. I, um, I had, I wouldn't call it a storybook career because there was really nobody there guiding me, but I had an agent and a manager within a month of being in LA and I wasn't even SAG. And I went out for X. <laughs> I went out, I went, I mean, you know, $500 you in my wallet. Did you just get here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You $500. Yeah. I know, everybody's like, you motherfucker, I'll kill you. You know, like people, I saw, like, I even gave away one of my SAG vouchers to somebody one time because, you know, I was just working there as an extra on a day in American Pie 2. And this, this boy and this girl had been a couple for years from the Bay Area. I think I remember that correctly, but had been spending years to get their SAG. And then I had a SAG voucher and I, I realized like I wasn't doing that to be like a great person. I, I just really, the part of me that could feel, I felt for them. And I said, I have more opportunity than where they're at right now. And I can give that to them because that will help them. And, you know, there, there was something Jim that like, like guided me through all this kind of like what you said, where it was like, you stood up for yourself and you felt like you were getting punished and losing something, but you were actually gaining something, right? And you didn't know it at the time that it was happening because you you literally said, this is the, this is the moment where you're never going to work in this town again. And, and with a man who had the reputation to destroy careers if he wanted to among a certain group. So it's not like, you know, you were just playing this, oh, please, Mr. You know, Weinstein, be nice to me. It was like, no, there was a real, <laughs> right. like, like it was, you know, those kind of things when you find yourself in those situations, and I've had friends who have too, it's just like, there are moments where you stand up for yourself. So basically, bottom line is this, I ended up going and working for a film finance sales and, and distribution company, uh, Senator International that became Mandate Pictures. They did Juno, The Grudge, Harold and Kumar, Stranger Than Fiction. And then the guy that was my mentor, Joseph Drake, he, he uh, executive produced also Hunger Games and a whole bunch of other stuff. I learned... I got four and a half years of an education 
answering phones, reading scripts, learning about the dynamic of the industry while I was trying to be a producer because I let the acting thing go because that wasn't what I really wanted to do. I had, an, I had a mind. I had a mind and other people saw that I had a mind. But the thing that I had to resist the most was <clears throat> the easy projections of people and the temptations and then creating the dance, right? So they yell at you or something. And if you don't stand up for yourself in that moment, you're never going to stand up for yourself until you retreat from that and then find it again. So I ended that very quickly. I went into the world of business. I went into the world of finance, banking, uh, technical engineering part of it. And then I ended up starting my production company simultaneously, No Restrictions Entertainment with One Hour Fantasy Girl in 2008. And I ended up making seven films over 12 and a half years. And each one of those films was from a personal story that I not was my life, but I had a, a feeling into that. It was a metaphor to my life in another person's life. And it wasn't, I'm not a film, I'm not a writer, produce, uh, director, I'm a producer. And I had a writer director out of UCLA that was like my equal, we we're like the brain surgeon, the, you know, the right and the left brain. But it's not just that, it's not simple like that. It's like a part, a real partnership where the trials and tribulations that you go through shape and mold you through the adversity that you're going to endure together right? And not tear each other apart because like how many, how many producers work with directors over and over and over again because of that madness, you know, that, that goes on. And, and, you know, Pete, we're dealing in the world of like Hollywood. So we're dealing with ego as a, as a, as a main focal oh. point. <laughs> like, that's the understatement of the year. You know? so, oh my God. It should so, be called so, ego wood. Right. And, and in short, basically what it was is I, I, all of my movies were from one hour fantasy girl, which was a story about a young girl. I highly recommend it. It was based on a true story about a girl who was doing fantasies out of a hotel room for $150 an hour where there was no sex, no nudity. All right. So it's a, it's a very, it's a very unexpecting, unassuming type of film because you hear titillation in it. And what you find is a story about a girl who's, who has people, all around her projecting onto her their weakness and looking for strength in her and yet she's the one who's having to be pulled forward into finding her own strength and it's only like a, it's it's like our movies are all about like reality with grains not grains of truth but big foundations of truth found in the most honest of things everything that you find in life is like a, a little gold nugget and you hold on to it and you keep putting it in these you know, you keep collecting them right over and over and you keep remembering and then you try to make sense of them again in relation to these other things over time. And we're all doing this in different ways. We're comparing things. So final story was that in 2017, um, the election of Donald Trump, my understanding of how Bernie Sanders was screwed and screwed himself. Um, that is true. He did screw himself and he screwed the country. But that's not because he's, you know, people in retrospect are, well, that was a socialist comment. No, no, I'm talking about what he represented was the last belief in possibly that there could be change in a person. That's why Trump came on to the scene. I'm not, I'm not trying to rehash all this. It's like sure, politics, sure, 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 sure. But it's a disruptive sure. trauma to be, to have your heart broken in a person because you believed in what they stood for right. you know you believed in all the things that they said and then the actions that they took were that didn't add up to the words it's like if you can say this and you say we are these things then you can also do this but you're telling me we can't do that right. and when you say you can't do that and you don't live it and you say another thing it it you have to start resolving your own contradictions and human trafficking of children small children I'm not talking about young women now. And that's not to say that there's, well, we're talking about defenseless children. When I learned about that, there was nothing more I needed to do other than to make a movie about human trafficking of children, which I did with a child's voice, which was ultimately censored. And I did a live in 2020, August of 2020, that ended up being seen by over 100 million people. And to this day continues to be shared around the world. And was translated into six different languages. I had no premeditated thoughts that day other than the fact that what was boiling up in me was a mirror to my own childhood. Not that I was sex trafficked, but this is part of the story that I've told, but it's not my story. It's, it's my past story. It's my parents' story. And so 
what happened was, is that this awakening inside of me, I came to face the truth about myself in the world that we live in through metaphor, through art. And it taught me that I had to take on certain accountability and responsibility for myself and my actions. And that if I say something, I am that. If somebody sees that I am something, I can't be that for them, but I can be what I am. And then I can stand on that and be truthful and not be afraid for my life and not as some crusader or martyr. In fact, if, if, and I'll say this really clearly, anybody goes back and looks at what I said and did and, and where I am today. Like if you had told me that my understandings four years ago and today would be from here to here. And you said, here, you're going to go through all of this to, to get here, but here's really good, but you're going to go through all of this. It's like, Oh no, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> and if, if I'm, if I'm being honest, like I'm not saying if I'm being honest, but about myself, in the part of me back then what that was naive foolish enough to believe and had great leaps of faith like took extremely great leaps of faith to 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 not to not be able to know what was going to happen but that you you couldn't stop this this issue was keeping to speak to me and then it it, it evolved into game day which is our next film and that's the one that's out now but that I'm just kind of giving you the context. Like that was my trajectory. I saw a lot of horrible stuff. You could talk about that for hours. Um, all the people that talk to you, all the things you've learned about Hollywood, all those. And it's like at the end of the day, only thing that that has is your belief in it makes it real for and against. They keep you going back and forth, turning the dials, following the storylines. It's not that there isn't legitimacy to tyranny or any of it, but tyranny it's like this. They, they took four years of fake news on one side of that mirror to project fascism, authoritarianism, like all of the things that we're actually going through right now. They yeah, spoke absolutely. it into existence and it was false, yet it was believed to yep. be real. And then yep. now you're seeing the full manifestation of it being enabled in collective mind consciousness for which people who are literally standing right next to get each other and seeing the very same thing are having two totally polarized views of reality, even though it's self-evident right in front of you. That is, uh, uh, there's two things, boy, you got me going crazy now. Yeah. I said a lot. I know. <laughs> no, I love it though. I love it though. Um, it, it, it is bizarre how you can go. Uh, what? What is this? Oh, it's a remote. No, it's not. It's a. It's a. It's an apple. And the fact that you don't know it's an apple, you should die. That's a remote. That is such. Like, whoa! What? Like, what is? I don't even know how to help this. Like, what do you? That 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 you nailed the end. But you let's. Whoa, Let's go back. What's the sex trafficking movie? So A Child's Voice is a movie. It's a supernatural drama. It's about a child who at the beginning of the film is killed and its soul lives on. And it calls out for help. And it's answered by the voice of a young man who's a heroin addicted homeless kid. And he is healed by this child's spirit and then is seen or shown where he needs to go. He's like shown visions. He's, he hears the voice. He's led down a path to connect with a woman whose boyfriend has begun kidnapping and selling children and is beating her. She's trying to escape him. And this child is bringing these two people who are very damaged together. And in that unity that comes about is a series of walls that begin to fall in both of them. And they end up getting swept up into the ring because of her connection with her boyfriend. And it's about both of them having the courage to stand up to the horror of what's going on and also what has happened and not be afraid and love each other. And it's in that spirit of love. It's very unique. I, I don't, I don't think there's a movie out there quite like it. It's not, it's not a big, you know, blockbuster. It's an independent film, but it's got great performances. Right. It's got a very beautiful film. It's a very beautiful film. It's the best, 
in my view, and I'm not comparing it to everybody else's movies, I'm just saying it's probably the kindest film that indicates the ugliness of that world where there is a market for children to be sold to people who bid on them. Powerful Do you people think, who bid on them. Now, you say that, and you know, people say that's the... Uh, the conspiracy where everyone knows what you're talking about. I think everyone knows what you're talking about, whether they believe yeah. it or not. Um, right. Have you come firsthand with this world, whether you can say it or not, or you really, because some people absolutely do not even look in that direction where I, I mm -hmm. do have, people I've come across that'll that'll that fight it and they can't go in great detail how deep embedded it supposedly mm -hmm. is and that is the I, it, it that is a a world that I don't know um many people know about no they don't exist or they don't believe it or they don't want to believe it and, you know, like if you're going like Epstein's Island, we'll go with blah, blah. And then I would tell people, I go, so did you ever see Pinocchio with the bar scene when he basically says we steal children and we bring them to Pleasure Island and they don't come back as little boys? Um, and they go, oh, well, I never really. I go, so now if that was the 40s and they're saying that. What do you like? What you don't think that's dark and creepy? And then the more, the more you're starting to see. Mm -hmm. w w can you tell me anything about that world or how yeah. real and how surreal well, it is, and what that really is, and 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 yeah. what people should, whether they believe it or not? Because here's the difference: you right. say, you say things because you believe it and you feel it and you know it and you honor it and you're like I. If you can't, if I'm going to give you truth, that's up for you to take it. Same with that's me. Right. I just give my right. own, I just give my own personal truth. You know, people mm -hmm. will get upset. They're not upset. When you, how can I, didn't, if I say I went to Costa Rica over mm -hmm. the break and I got COVID and I took ivermectin and it worked in 24 hours, I'm I'm trying to help you. Why I don't I don't have a deal with ivermectin. Why would I say something like that? But mm -hmm. some people's heads, because they're in that world that you're talking about. They're still in. This is not. This is not. A, it's not what it is. It's a. It's. Right. Oh my goodness gracious, my God. Um, made, it's a perfect point. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I think it's all of those. So, so I, I know what you're asking me personally, but I'm going to speak to also the bigger question that is where all of the cognitive dissonance is. What I came to understand through a very wise friend of mine was she said, cause, she, and I don't try to sell people by labels, but she's very intuitive. She's, she works with some very brilliant people in, uh, healing frequencies, somatic healing um trauma like really intense stuff not this biohack quick fix kind of stuff like take your cold plunge and reset your nervous system and then you're good i'm not saying, <laughs> but you know what you know it, it's <laughs> but that but it but it's 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 stuff that you sure. can get you know it's stuff that you can find in, in your instagram posts and stuff and then you start you know trying them and okay but she said something that was she, and she was reflecting on her own personal experiences with people that she admired and thought were amazing and incredibly spiritually aware and intelligent who ended up taking the jab and buying all this BS. And she said, what it, the common denominator, John, is the fact that people who don't conceive of such evil being possible within themselves first don't see it in the world. That's a big statement, and I tell everyone this nonstop. You have to believe evil exists. And not only does it exist, it exists in forms that's uncomprehendable. Mm 
Yes. And we can go on. Like if you just wanted to on such minute detail, I mean, we, we can go broad and it's, go, yeah, broad. Uh, it, it, it goes on and on and on and on. I mean, we can go to wars where you know there's no reason to go into war, but you will sell the war yes. knowing that innocent human being fathers will go you know my son is a great human being and i'm proud of him knowing you plotted and you know you're lying to have humanity slaughtered on purpose to me that's mm -hmm. genocide on mm -hmm. your own people mm -hmm. um and that has gone over and over and over. You know, and again, I start I look at my dad, World War II, both. So I, I take mm -hmm. a lot of time to think of all this. Right. But you got to be careful with some of the things you say because people can't. And then even with whether it's sex trafficking or even what's going on right now, people do not want to believe it's a possibility this was a pure evil intention. Mm -hmm. And they just they no, why would it be? Because you're not acknowledging it. And they know that. They know that. This is the part that is probably the hardest for us to see right now where that could lead, where it could lead, not where it will go, but the way they want it to. You're talking about an authoritarian energy that is narcissistic in its in its behavior, its absolute value. You know, in terms of these are the good people, these are the bad people, these are the these are the virtuous issues, these are the hateful people. It's very, very literal. There isn't any discussion, debate, other possibilities, other avenues. And why I'm saying this is not because I'm trying to go, guys, we got to watch this. It is important. There are going to be people who fall into that. There's no way out of it. But how many fall into that? How many get boxed in by the opposition? that they're taking their cues for their positions to dig in. This is what I'm talking about, right? Mm. So there has to be a greater dialogue, new possibilities, new ways, new thinkings. So for the film world and for your world and the things that you were talking about, your scripts and this, what I'm trying to explain to people where I can is you have the decentralized networks on their way into existence you have the nft world in their existence you have the metaverse coming online now all of that by itself in and of itself is neutral but if you don't take the reins of creation in whatever lane you are in and you leave it up to the cultural engineers to hand you now a response to all the shit that they've created before this time everything that preceded this moment brought us to this moment and the truth of the matter is, is that it requires ourselves at times to take an uncomfortable, hard look in that mirror and see what's really going on. What's really going on inside the mind and the heart that no one else can see, no one else knows but you, God, whatever you conceptualize God as, a creator of heaven and earth, a creator of all of this. And you're going to say, okay, what is my meaning? What is my purpose in this time? What, to go down with all of it, with all of the BS? That's what they want. That's part of the whole thing is to get as many people as they can harvested energetically into that world of belief because it makes it real for them in their time, in their time. In your time, this is the Goonies moment. Down here, it's our time, our time down here. And it's all over. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And to simplify everything you said, John, I tell I tell people this. It's so simple. Why are you doing what you're doing? Let's say it's just even to write a film. It's to be in a. It's a certain job. Are you doing it? so you can get the <laughs> because those in <laughs> those intentions are always gonna lead to that side that energy and you and or you're doing it because you know in your heart of hearts and then and i learned all this i i it, it's you got to be extremely patient you have to trust your spirit, you have to trust the goodness in life, God, all of it, the light, the God, the spirit, all of it. 
if you trust it, the dark will come after you so bad because it's so pissed that your light is going on. Hence, you should die. Uh, this, uh, if you don't believe it, the, the, the brighter your light gets, the more they want to stomp on it because they've already, they've already committed to that. Um, yeah. And hopefully they they get out of it. That's the one thing that is very true that people should know. The dark side of the equation of this is committed. Co committed. Committed. That yeah. should not be a, hope this you not die. a casual, you know, stroll in the park kind of day. Everything that they do in the, the hand signals, the, the messaging, all of that, all of that vibrational energy is total, pure commitment. And it takes unconscious people who seek power in a world of men, mostly dominated by men. There are women on there, but an unconscious world of men to make possible the ritual magic that facilitates idols of worship who have nothing to do with your lives on any level. What they say on TV, what they say online is all their perception of reality broadcast out to you and I for us to debate. And that shit lives rent free in our heads. That's really what it comes down to. It lives you rent free. They tax the shit out of you. They mock you uh, every step of the way. And then they have the gall to turn around and say, you know what? I'm going to plug my life and my political positions or my belief system into this person. And you literally become a megaphone for that message. It is so blatantly obvious once you, once you really see it. And I've seen it forever. So I've been in my own freak show for a <laughs> long time. And it is, it is so difficult to have conversations like this, John. Good God, I'm coming over your house. I'm going to have a coffee. We're going to talk for nine straight days. We're going to be, we're hey, gonna be Jim, nine knew, straight days. <laughs> I just told you, you know, I said when I saw your videos, I said, this guy gets it. And I saw it at a soul level in you. And that's why people are attacking you. And that's why it's not, it's not this play this, you know, attack me kind of victim thing. Oh, I'm just, a, it's like, no. They're trying to find chinks in your armor to get you to respond in the way that makes their argument valid. That's all it is. Any energy you give to that shit, any acknowledgement you give to that shit, I'm not saying you don't you know, seek the higher level, what you're doing, but anytime you engage, I'm just talking about all of us, online or otherwise, those people that are trying to provoke you and they trigger you in such a way and you don't even know who they are and you don't even know their lives and they don't even know you, it's literally a position of, anger and self-hatred and it's it's very powerful because it emotionally can wound you and draw you into it it's like luke skywalker being drawn in during empire strikes back to and then look what happened he lost his freaking hand you know yes <laughs> Dude, that's a, I, I i'm telling you um i there was there was a time when i rewatched star wars um you know so as a kid but then when I rewatched it as an adult showing my kids, I sat there like this. <gasps> <laughs> you saw it all. <laughs> oh my God. It is brilliant. It explains uh, even the force, yep. even call me crazy, <laughs> even the force. I mean, you just, Mm, and it literally the clink. Whoa! <laughs> oh, like, wow, crystals. I want to go build my own lightsaber. <laughs> you know, yes. On the empire. <laughs> yes. Um, it is absolutely mind-boggling, and and it is wow. Yeah, me, John, you're on my say. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength. We're on a. Wow, this is all this the families was, coming back home. I watched you on TV 15, 20 years ago, and here we are. Who knew? Who who <laughs> knew? <laughs> <laughs> well, where are you heading? Like what, what direction are you going? What um what what are, what what is your life for? Because right now this is all I got. I got I speak. I, I, I love talking to people like you and whoever, and I'm I'm still want to create. But I don't want to create, I, I shouldn't say not for money, but I don't want to, that is not the first. It's touching lives 
It's making people more positive. It's making them more aware to help them in their journey, whether I can write something or say something or make them, mm -hmm. whatever it is. That's, mm -hmm. and that's a hard line to walk, but that's mm -hmm. what I want to do. Like I, 15, 10 years ago, I would say even 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I, I'm writing a script. I'm like, oh my God. And then, and then it'll be, and then it'll get picked up. And then, and then it'll make a hundred thousand dollars a week. And then, and then I'll, I don't know, I'm a jet. Th those days, are so, <laughs> <laughs> those days are so long gone. Where now I'm right. like, do you know how many people need to hear this? Yeah. Do you know how many lives I think I can change just with, yeah. Showing this character and this moment and judging how they're judge they they're so judgmental, but yet they change. It's it's uh I love where I'm at in this part of life, but that's mm -hmm. how I think now. You're I, you're on your way, like all the people that follow you and more. Um, this is the time to build new networks, not new. I mean, platforms are important, but networks between platforms, there needs to be the cross pollination. So like, mm. if you take the example of Los Angeles, everybody's just taking, 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 nobody's putting anything back in. But what you and I and other people have the power to do is to use 21st century mind mentality of decentralization, breaking the fourth wall, bringing people together, creating space, creating conversations, creating dialogue, and then going and manifesting those. So in other words, like, it's like, don't, See, I, I was asked in another interview uh, some months ago, well, what about Hollywood? It's like, they're going to do their thing. And if you, all you're doing is imitating them, then you're just chasing that money too. But but that's that's all what you have to conform to in order to fit into those, you know, we, you can talk about that forever. But right. here's the thing. It's like, at the end of the day, what do people want? To tell the story that's right down the street in your neighborhood or in your own home. The ones that aren't spoke, the, the, under, the real underserved, right? The real underserved are the tens of millions of people who are struggling with suicide, depression, anxiety, divorce, homicide, uh, crime, poverty, starvation. Those are the unsung heroes of the people who are surviving and not committing acts of crime, not because, oh, it's a determining factor whether you're a good person or a bad person that commits the crime. There's motivations for each, but the choice to make away from doing that and sacrifice further. That's what we all believe in. Those are the people that we celebrate in our own lives. And what we're doing on screen and in our movies is trying to give, again, a sense that there's some fantasy out there where the answer lies. It's like, no, real art is the deepest exploration of yourself as best you can be conscious of at the time as you follow your beliefs. And when you, you know this, Jim, and I, I know it too, whether you're a performer or in the field of the art it's when you're in that flow that you are not thinking it's coming out of you the divine is coming through you it's moving through you and it's moving through the audience and there's that moment where you're like almost outside of yourself watching it happen and it's so it's like a flow of energy that is let go of not held on to because you know this in comedy yes in comedy the moment yes. comes and then a new moment has to come it can't yes. keep doing the same thing over and over again. It's got to be its own unique expression every time. <laughs> you, you, you nail it. You nailed it. It is. And I, when I discovered that, and I, and I'll do that. To, I'll do a show. I did a show last Monday and I knew it was just a magical, my emotions of what this person, that evil was trying to infiltrate. And I went, yeah. You know what? I'm going <laughs> to hit you with pure love. Pure love. And the set was divine. And then it was beautiful. It was magical. It was healing. It was. Yeah. Uh, and then the next night I went, I'm not even thinking about last night because I know I'm not going to, I'm going to try to repeat. It's just, it's gone. It's right. gone. Right. I just, I just read the script last night that I wrote two years ago and I was going I wrote that? Like <laughs> that's powerful like I just started choking up I forgot I was in that and, and to, to bring more of your point mm -hmm. what I learned more and more is what I do I do this 
I even did it before I spoke to you. I go, God, whatever you want me to think, what you want me to think, whatever you want to come out of me and say, how I can, how I could just be the vessel and let it come out the way I can, your grace will work and your healing and your positivity will work. Let me just get out of your way and let it happen. And then I'll look back and go, wow, I can't even believe that came out of my mouth. And that's, that is a very powerful source of letting that energy flow. Mm -hmm. And not, like you said, not trying to grab and not take credit. I don't like you. No, it's not me. It's just, it's just, I, I allow it to just, you could do it too. Just allow that's it. This is the thing, and, and I, I don't want to be too wordy on this, but what I, you asked me the question, what I'm doing. I'm moving to Greenville, South Carolina to create a 21st century film studio that is based on scalable business of a model that focuses on independent film of a budgets of under a million dollars, okay, on our side. And what we're doing there is we see all of the potential that's there, but it's budding potential, it hasn't been organized yet. See, if you go to where there's already stuff being preyed upon, there's gonna be scarcity. And you're gonna be chasing after those that piece of the meat or the scraps or the position that somebody else falls down from and you're, you're right there and it works for the agenda, so come right in. Now, that's, that's at the highest levels, but everything serves underneath it that energy. So my thought process is this, like what I would tell you or tell anybody, it's like, you've got to go where there's need and abundance that is available. And you have to have the vision to put those pieces together and share your vision with people, not to convince them that this is what has to be done, but to listen to them and then say what it is that you're trying to do and see what matches with people who feel and think along the same kind of lives. But you are the person, it's the Jesse Owens, it's the hundredth monkey. It's, you have to, when I say these things, Jesse Owens broke the four minute mile, right? It was the whole four minutes, he ran a, a mile under four minutes. It had right. never been done before, but once right. he did it, everybody else started doing it because they believed it was possible like he imagined it first. He didn't know that he could do it. Whoa. <laughs> exactly. Whoa. <laughs> and it's a remote. <laughs> so so, so it, it, it basically it validates the two, right? Because, because you're not talking about it in theory. You're actually proving it in concept. So it's like everybody talks about, you know, proof of concept and, the deck and all that. It's like, yes, that all exists in the world of possibility and imagination. But if you go out and build it with people who are ready and able, you have to be the builder up here. You have to be the network out there that puts all these great people together who want to do. It's like, Jim, nobody's, nobody's complaining today or arguing against you about people not wanting to do something. Right. Right. Everybody wants to do something. Nobody wants right. to live in this hell. <laughs> it right. doesn't. Right. <laughs> So it's like at the fundamental level, you have to become a little kid in a sense of play. And if you create the right rules within the play of what you're going to do, then you're going to bring the right people on board because you're not going to be going up a big corporate woke machine that's profit margins are based on corporate sponsorships who are all trying to socially organize and condition people into their buckets for future customer lines that's right. in the digital world. That's, that's what right. they're doing. That's all they're doing. That's it. Just at, at, a, at a functional mechanical level, the hierarchy stuff, we can get into that. But at the practical level, they are basically emotionally conditioning and messaging people to their brands. That's the trajectory that they're on. And so if you are taking any lesson from that model is just to go, what's the inverse of that? It's opening it up. It's making it distributed. It's it's figuring out how to incentivize behaviors. Like like I just at a, at, a, at a structural level, take all of the platforms and their functional uses out there today and try to combine them, not into one new platform, but in a way that self-organizes and does all the work for you. So you're not having to go into this website, that website, this one. Take the best features of everything. Crowdsourcing with NFTs is, is an explorable like, Jim, you could take all the clips of all the things that you've ever done and, and, and mint them or not even mint them, but put them out there as originals that people, you can fund things this way. 
crypto world, I mean, I, I'm not some expert in it, but what I'm saying is the amount of money in the crypto world and what can be done for so very little crypto is amazing. Charitable organizations, all of it, all of this stuff is out there waiting for people to get in, in online. And here's the thing. It's not about going digital. It's about being able to take concepts that work and prove making a blueprint that other people can take and build upon those blueprints rather than the exclusivity of my secrets and my projects over here that you have to worship me for. This is the billionaire class, by the way, that gets up in front of you every day. It's right. their exclusive technologies and their innovations over here that they create and they should become idols of worship and thought leaders and tell us what to think and do. Right and left. My good billionaire versus your bad billionaire over here. Really, that's what we're going to argue about and who's telling us the truth. We're going to take Elon Musk's side because he sends out a tweet and we don't know a damn thing of what he has planned or what the future plans are. <laughs> I know what I'm saying is crazy, but it's also No, it's true. not. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. And, and you know it's not. Um, I'm just, just saying, that, Jim, you know it's so powerful what people can do. Look, today, filmmakers, figure out a way, if you're a filmmaker or a comedian, figure out a way that you can do a live stream on a channel somewhere who will host and promote your show for a portion of the percentage of the pre-screen sales that you'll do on a live stream with a live Q&A afterwards with the audience. That's just an idea for day one. Right? And, and what you could do is a $300, min or 300 minimum ticket sales so that it makes it worth your while and their while. While they pr promote it, they get a portion of it. You get the portion of it. You can do uh, donations and tips during the broadcast, and you can do it afterwards, and they can download and own that experience to take it with them among the people that participated. That's like that's like their special. It's like what it is, is it's like what Comic-Con used to be. It was specialness. It was the discovery of that artist. It was my relationship with that moment in my time watching an artist who is creating all these comics before somebody came along and picked him up and made him corporate. Wow. I gotta, I gotta pick your brain so much more with, with, cause I, I am along exactly what you're saying. And I want to, I want to have more knowledge because I, I have someone trying to explain to me this world and I just don't understand, it's but blind. you hit something that was interesting just now. Yeah. And I, and I think I heard it the right way where i reach a point now where i'm like you know what i don't even care if this is done i just know this is so good for humanity i wanted mm -hmm. to give the ball to someone else and maybe they can make it whatever and then i could sit in my little rocking chair and just kind of smile and even though they're making x y and z and this and that i go that's pretty cool that 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 got out there like that and and i have to say I shouldn't, but it's the, there, I have experienced that many times and it's such yeah. a beautiful feeling to just be humble and not even tell anyone, not even go, I'm going to let you in a little secret, but do you see that over there? Yeah, that was, ah, I'm not even going <laughs> to tell you. <laughs> where, where in the past it was like, this son of a bitch took my kid and got my wife, got my wife, that was mine. And the moment, the moment where that changed for me was a, I saw a little saying and I refused to say where I saw it or who said it because then it creates judgment. But the saying is one person can change the whole world for the better as long as they don't give a damn who gets the credit. And that moment, that is such just a simple statement. But man, you got me going. I want to, um, I can't thank you enough for hanging out. Hey, thank you for having me on. Thank you. Really. It's an honor to be here with you. Oh, the honor is my, I, I love that I, was so naive i was using naive <laughs> or, or dumb uh, or or and, I, <laughs> and as soon as you saw you i was as soon as i saw you I'm like i know this guy because <laughs> exactly. once i'm on instagram i don't even look you know i don't really look around i just go okay well, i like where this guy's coming from but how amazing that 
the forces just connected. And I do want to pick your brain. I'll get your number, and I hope I don't become a pest. But no, we'll we'll talk again. I've always wanted to know you and see what you're up to. So yeah, good. we got to connect either here or but definitely outside of here. I much love to you, man. Much love to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it, John. I appreciate it, Jim. You have a great day. Thank you. Bum, 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 bum. We'll see you next time. Dude, that was such... As soon as I saw John, I, the inside of me just... I, because on my life, the first time I saw him, on on uh, on social media i said i need to talk to that guy i can feel his soul i can feel him i can feel his energy and what he's trying to put out there and what he's trying to say and how he's trying to say it so it's absolutely mind boggling that i just had that opportunity uh i hope you enjoyed today cuz i did I don't even care. Listen, I hope you enjoyed it, whatever, but I really enjoyed it. And um, what a what a fascinating, fascinating human being. And I, I don't get to run across that a whole lot. But when I do, I really enjoy those moments. He taught me a lot today. Beautiful. That beauty does exist. Listen, as much as this world you think is going to the to the shitter or whatever. That's what it wants you to think. That's what it wants you to think. When you have dark energies that consistently throw arrows at you, and even people that really are painful to hear from, whether it's your family, and they're just holding on to ideologies, don't let that damper your goodness. Don't let it damper your soul. Don't let it damper your light. Don't let it damper your spirituality, the God in you that thrives and gives you. There's nothing that feels better than feeling great and giving that to someone else. Um, I hope you had a great time. Enjoy yourselves. Until the next time, thanks for hanging out here in the Bruniverse. And we'll just keep spinning away here in the universe. So see you next week. JimBrewer.com. I have a bunch of new dates coming. I got tours coming up in April, May, June. Uh, Long Island. They lifted the mandates at my favorite place at the Paramount. So we're working on it. Now that you don't have to show a Vax card or anything like that, um, hopefully we can uh, get that going. I'm super excited for them and the people of Long Island. And I'm um, coming to Detroit. Coming in this weekend, this weekend, as you're watching this, Cleveland, Cleveland, four shows and I'm out. Love you. Love and laughter. Thanks for hanging out in the universe. Broadway play in three years. Six foot safe. You look great, Grandpa. Take out your cameras for selfies, because Jim wanted his head sticking out the edge of the cannon. Oh my God, I love these. <laughs> Sexist, racist, rights, rights, gay rights, people rights, human rights. For what you are about to receive. And may you all have love and laughter in this crazy lifetime we're living. Yeah,